I always wanted to make games, I was just never brave enough to start. Instead, I went to study engineering. Go figure. Towards the end of 2019, I was getting very fed up with my engineering job and I felt I needed something that is fun but also challenging. I came across with an advertisement of a game development school when I was abroad on a business trip in December of 2019. I became so excited I called them almost immediately. They told me they have one seat for the beginner course that starts in January of 2020 because someone cancelled. This was before Covid, so the number of seats were limited by the classroom size. I enrolled immediately. I guess you know what engine we were using. Unity, of course. I so fell in love with game development that I resigned from my engineering job and started to build a portfolio. Using Unity, of course. I got an environment artist job at a small studio in January of 2021. My first tasks were related to environment design, but later it became apparent that I was best at programming and got more and more tasks related to development of our procedural environment design tools. After being in the workforce for three years, I finally enjoyed my day job and it was great. In January of 2022 I had to go back to engineering because of salary reasons, but at least I soon started to work on a hobby project. I have tried a few engines before, such as Unreal Engine 4 and 5, Godot 3.5 and even Babylon.js, but Unity was always my favorite engine and I returned to it whenever I had something specific in mind. In the beginning of 2023 I even gathered the courage to start a bigger project with the hope that one day I I will be able to publish it. My progress was and is very slow since there was always something I needed to do in my free time instead of programming, such as visiting relatives, doing stuff around the house or getting married, but I was making progress nonetheless. I made a scriptable object state machine, a very basic climbing system, an interaction system and started working on an inventory system as well. I was at a point when I considered starting a devlog series to share my work and get some feedback when came the 12th of September 2023 and Unity announced their new runtime fee policy. During the past few years, Unity made some decisions which I was not happy with. For example, they bought Speedtree but did not make the tools available for free for Unity users. Same thing with beta tools. They merged with Iron Source. They cancelled Gigaya and laid off Workforce. These were decisions I did not agree with personally, but they more or less could be justified from a business standpoint. And while they were not really beneficial for developers, they were not hurting them either. However, this runtime fee is completely different. First of all, it does not make sense. It requires developers to pay after installs, a metric which does not necessarily correlate with revenue. A game can be free to play, so an install does not necessarily mean revenue. The installation can come from a pirated copy, the game can be installed on multiple machines by the same user. So it is a metric that cannot be measured correctly and it can easily include cases when the developer did not receive any money, but Unity asks for the install fee anyway. Also, they ask for a fixed rate. It is a small amount, sure, but it means that if a developer wants to actually earn money after each sale, they cannot lower the price below a given threshold. Then there are the install fee reductions. You can reduce your install fee to practically zero if you use Unity's own advertising solution, level play, instead of the competition, for example AppLovin. But here is the thing. People use the competing tools for a reason. They are better than level play. So Unity basically blackmails mobile devs to use an inferior tech in order to not go bankrupt. And finally, Unity wants to introduce this runtime fee for all games developed using the Unity engine retroactively. Games that were developed when Unity's monetization was completely different, games that might never have been made with the Unity engine if the engine's monetization was the same at the time that they want to introduce now. For the past few days I was reading articles about the situation and discussing it in Hungarian game developer Facebook groups. When I mentioned I am thinking about changing engines, one of the replies I got was a question. Why leave Unity? Did I receive 200k downloads and 200k USD revenue? Well. No. In fact, I do not even have any published games yet, so why leave then if it does not affect me now and probably will not affect me in the following few years? My answer is because it does affect others. This policy will hurt other studios, it will even put some of them into the risk of bankruptcy and it might even affect me in the future should I ever finish and release my game and find success with it. Another comment I saw was Unity does deserve to get money for its engine, so it is fair that developers pay them. It is true and I totally agree. The problem is 
They already do. Many developers pay a subscription fee to Unity. Not everyone, for sure. For example, I have not paid a single penny for the engine. However, I have used the asset store a lot, and I am sure Unity took a small cut from each of my purchases, and if I ever release my game to a modest success, I would be happy to change to a higher tier subscription model or do a revenue share, the same model that Unreal uses. But install-based fees, especially after all the questionable decisions of the past few years, no thanks. So, after nearly four years of using the Unity engine, first as a student, then as a professional, and now as a hobbyist, it is time to say goodbye to Unity. At least for now. I really love the engine and what it stands for, or what it stood for in the past, and I hope I will return to it one day. But for that to happen, they will need to find a more reasonable method to monetize their engine and build back the trust and goodwill of the developers they so foolishly cast aside. I really hope that Unity will be able to get back to its original path and reverse course while it is not too late, for Unity's sake and for the industries. In the meantime, I will be restarting my game in Unreal Engine 5. It will be a slow process, and I will probably start with a few smaller projects just to get going, but I am sure my 4 years of Unity experience will speed up the learning process. However, before I start documenting my adventures with Unreal Engine 5 here on YouTube, I want to release another video, which I had been working on for some time now. It is related to game development of course, but it is a new format and I am excited about it. So if you are interested in that, be sure to subscribe to my channel. While I was making this video, Unity announced on the 18th of September that they will update the new pricing policy because of the backlash. I am very skeptical about this, but at least a little bit hopeful. I personally already made up my mind about changing engines. Since my project is in the early stages, I will not lose too much progress, and learning a new engine is always useful. So, in the next half to one year, I will be using Unreal Engine, but as I mentioned before, Unity is my favorite engine, and I would love to return to it one day. Updating the new pricing policy is the first step. Thank you very much for listening, and I see you in the next one. Bye!